Hi, my name is Michael Murray, a Solutions Architect at AWS. In this video, I'm going to take you through my journey of building an air quality monitoring system using an Arduino. I'm someone with some experience and background with Raspberry Pis and AWS, but very new to Arduinos themselves. Here I'll be sharing my learning journey, including the challenges I faced and the insights I gained. So whether you're a student, a builder, or an aspiring IoT enthusiast, this guide will help you navigate the Arduino and AWS ecosystem with confidence and inspire you to start your own project, even if you're new to it. All right, let's talk about what we're building today. We're creating a device that's going to monitor the air quality around my 3D printer. I decided to build this because I do a lot of 3D printing and wanted to measure the room for printing conditions and air quality for safety. It's going to measure four key things. Temperature, which can affect the material behaving like warping and layer adhesion. Humidity, which can lead to material degradation, causing brittle filament and cracking. The CO2 levels are important for the indoor quality of the air. And the total volatile organic compounds, or TVOCs, which are potentially harmful chemicals in the air that can be released due to different types of filaments used. We'll be using an Arduino Nano as the brains of our operation. We'll hook it up to some sensors and add a display so that we can read the measurements locally and then we could send this data to AWS. From there, we'll get saved to Amazon Timestream, which is a time series database We'll then analyze and visualize it with Amazon Grafana, and we'll even set up some alerting if our measurements are deemed unsafe. Let's take a look at the hardware components for this project. First, we have the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. This little powerhouse is gonna control everything. Next, we have our sensors, the SI7021, for temperature and humidity, and the SGP30 for air quality, measuring CO2 and TVOCs. To display our readings, we're gonna use a 16 by two LCD screen. And we'll be putting this all together on a breadboard, actually two breadboards. Don't worry if it sounds like a lot, we're gonna go through it step by step. Now let's walk through the assembly process. Feel free to pause the video if you need to take a better look. Remember to take your time with this part. Rushing through wiring is a recipe for frustration later on. I just mentioned that we're using two separate breadboards. The reason is due to having components that need different voltage. One breadboard is for our 3.3 volt components which is powered off a micro USB connection. And the other is for our five volt components with a five volt power supply module. And of course, a bunch of jumper wires to connect it all together. Keeping this separated helps prevent any power related mishaps. But once connected to the cloud and viewing in the Grafana dashboard, you can completely eliminate the five volt breadboard. With our hardware set up, it's time to bring it to life with some code. Let's fire up the Arduino IDE and go over some of the main sections and understand what we're looking at. The board manager allows you to install and manage support for different Arduino boards and third-party hardware. It enables you to add new board packages and update existing ones. If you already have your Arduino board connected, it will detect and install the necessary packages. That may include additional dependencies. The, board, the library manager provides a centralized interface to browse, install, and update Arduino libraries. These libraries extend the functionality of your sketch by providing pre-written code for various components and features. 
The sketchbook is the default directory where your Arduino sketches or your programs are saved. It helps organize and store your projects in a centralized location. The serial monitor to the right is a built-in tool that allows you to send and receive serial data between your computer and the Arduino board. It's extremely useful for debugging and monitoring your sketch outputs. The upload button. This button compiles your sketch and uploads it to the connected Arduino board. It's the primary way to transfer your code from the IDE to your hardware for execution. Now let's take a look at our code and remember to feel free to pause the video if you need a better look. Don't worry if you're not a coding expert and remember feel free to pause this video if you need to take a closer look. Our code consists of two files, our main sketch file and a secrets file. The secrets file consists of things that you wouldn't want to program directly into your code. These are things that are going to contain sensitive information such as your Wi-Fi SSID, your Wi-Fi password, the host name to your MQTT broker, which is specific to your AWS account, as well as the secret certificate from your device when you create your IoT thing within your AWS account. Back in our main sketch file, you'll see the list of libraries our code is dependent on in order to operate correctly. These are downloaded and installed through the library manager. We'll need libraries for our sensors, the LCD screen, and other components of the Arduino. The next section initializes the various components like the LCD screen and sensors with some air control worked in if something is not found. Then the main loop repeatedly goes through and calls functions as needed, such as if connect disconnected from the Wi-Fi, it automatically tries to reconnect. It repeats over and over through this looped process of gathering sensor data, printing it to the LCD screen and serial port. It prints roughly every second and roughly every two seconds, it, it gathers all the information together and sends it to AWS IoT Core in JSON format. Remember, coding is often an iterative process. Don't be afraid to run your code, see what happens, and make adjustments. It's all part of the learning process. Now for the really fun part, sending our data to the cloud. We'll be using AWS IoT Core for this. First, we need to set up a thing in the AWS IoT Core. This represents our device in the cloud. We'll also need to generate a device certificate. This is like a special passport that allows our Arduino to securely communicate with the AWS cloud. AWS IoT Core is also where we find our MQTT broker host name, and we'll take all of this information and add it to our secrets file within the Arduino IDE. Once the data reaches the IoT Core, we can route our data to other AWS services. We will store it in a time series database called Amazon TimeStream. And then to visualize this data, we can use Amazon Grafana to create a dashboard and can monitor it in real time. We also want to set up alerts so that if the air quality drops below a certain level to receive those to our email, via Amazon SNS. Let's take a look at what this looks like in the console. Here I've logged into the AWS console. From the console home, I'm gonna browse over to IoT Core, where I can view all of the devices that I've created, the two sensors that I've created, and each sensor has a certificate associated with it. This is that passport that we talked about that enables the device 
to speak securely to the IoT cloud. Once the message is received, we can use the message routing and rules in order to send a, the message to Amazon Timestream or check it against an air quality alert rule. This air quality alert rule is a SQL statement that checks the information based on that JSON formatting that it came in and if it's within these variables that I decided on. If they are outside of those, then it sends the SNS notification to my email address. With the other rule, sends it to the time stream. And here we have a SQL statement on how it is to write those entries to the time stream table. We can view that by going back to our services and going to Amazon time stream. Within Amazon time stream, we can view our resources and we can see our air quality sensor database and a sensor readings table. This is then picked up by Amazon Grafana that I have a workplace for and I'm able to view the measurements of the temperature, humidity, the TVOC, and the CO2 for this past hour. I have it set to the last hour. We can also see how this is built and displayed. And I've set this up to pull the values from the Amazon time stream. As we wrap up, I want to share some key takeaways from my journey. These lessons and tips might save you some of the headaches I experienced when you're working on your Arduino projects. Start simple and scale up. When I first started, I wanted to do everything at once, which was a big mistake. I learned it's much better to start with a simple circuit and basic code. Get one sensor working, then add complexity step by step. Trust me, it's less overwhelming and way more satisfying. Document everything. I can't stress this enough. Document your work, take photos of your wiring, save versions of your code, and keep notes on what you've tried. There were times when I thought, I'll remember this, and guess what? I didn't. Good documentation is a lifesaver when troubleshooting. Embrace the different communities out there. The AWS and Arduino communities are amazing and super helpful. When I got stuck, which happened more often than I'd like to admit, Forums and online communities were invaluable. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Chances are someone else has faced the same problem. And patience is your best friend. Hardware projects can be frustrating. I spent two whole days trying to figure out why my LED display wasn't working only to realize I forgot to connect a common ground. Remember, every problem has a solution. Take breaks, come back with fresh eyes, and be patient with yourself. And celebrate those small wins. Don't forget to celebrate your project no matter how small. Got an LED light to blink? That's awesome. Your first sensor readings? Celebrate it. These small victories will keep you motivated throughout your project. And remember, everyone starts somewhere. This wraps up our journey of building an air quality monitor with Arduino and AWS. We've covered everything from component selection to cloud integration. Remember, every builder starts somewhere, and with persistence, you can create amazing things. Don't forget to check out the resources I've left in the description, including official documentation and community forums. 
I hope this video has inspired you to start your own Arduino or AWS product. Don't forget to like and subscribe.